Hi, I'm Femi OK, and you're in the stream. Today, we speak with four royal heads of state, but they might not be who you'd expect. So we're talking about micronations today. I have discovered there is a hashtag micronations. Uh, Malika Bilal, digital producer of the stream, what did you discover when you went looking online? Well, you know, I'd venture to say that not a whole lot of us in the office, at least, knew the intricacies of mm -hmm. what a micronation was, right. but not true for our online community. Not only do they know about it, some of them are members of micronations, okay. uh, including this person. This is a video comment we got from someone who's a citizen of Ladonia. Have a listen to this. Uh, I think the whole concept of micronations is really very exciting because if you look at it these are just small entities of course they are not sovereign sovereign nations yet but then the whole concept is about coming together and making a nation work and I think that is a brilliant idea thank you we want to know if you agree or disagree. Join this conversation with hashtag AJStream. So do you think that's a Ladonian accent? I would say no. Okay, we'll find out in just a minute. So also joining us here in the studio, we have King Jeremiah Heaton. And he's the self-proclaimed king of the Kingdom of North Sudan. And that's a, a stretch of land that borders Sudan and Egypt. So King Jeremiah, welcome. Thank you for having me. How should I address you? Not King Jeremiah, who works simply Jeremiah, would be fine. Fantastic. Is it good to be king? It is. It's very new uh, right. and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's growing on me. All right. Excellent. We're going to hear much more about your new kingdom in just a moment. But if you have a story that you'd like to see us discuss right here on the stream, well, just let us know. You can go to Google Plus, tell us about your idea, and you could end up in the stream. My name is Jume Casho, and I keep my eye on the future, and I'm in the stream. Some are born into positions of power and others marry into it. And then there are those who establish their own nations. Micronations or self-proclaimed entities that assert independence as sovereign states, well, they exist around the world, some only virtually. Although rarely recognized, a few of the more established micronations, like the Principality of Sealand, have passports, currency, a flag, and stamps. Though they may not get any love from the international community, micronations, they do recognize each other. There's actually an inter-micronational Olympic Games and a film festival. So who would go through all of the effort it actually takes to establish a nation? We're about to talk to people who've done exactly that. Joining us from Downton, England is King Michael Howarth of the Kingdom of Redonda, and that's a two square kilometer island in the Caribbean. In Los Angeles, Queen Carolyn Shelby of the Royal Republic of Ladonia. It actually encompasses a one square kilometer of the land off the Swedish coast. And in Essex is Prince Michael Bates of the Principality of Sealand. And that's a former military sea fort roughly 10 kilometers off the coast of Suffolk in the southeast of England. So your Royal Majesties, your Highnesses, welcome to the stream. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. All right. so. Hello. Hello, everybody. So let's start with micronations and where all of these micronations are. So have a look on my laptop. We did a little map for you because you may not be familiar with them. So we're going to start here in the Kingdom of North Sudan. So that would be on the eastern side of Africa. We head across to towards the Principality of Sealand. Ladonia is very close to Sweden <laughs> or Sweden, depending on your take, and Redonda mm -hmm. out there in the Caribbean. Now, that's the map place. This is what Redonda actually looks like. Ha! So, King Michael the Grey, <clears throat> a little bit of a rock and quite barren. How did you get to be king of this rock? Well, <clears throat> the, 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 the whole idea or the concept of being the king of Redonda is steeped in, in myth and mystery, really. Wow. It goes way back to the 1800s, and it's been passed down from king to king, and I just happen to be the current incumbent. Um, that's uh, that's just, how I became king. You came. just happen to be. How, king Michael the Great, how can something like that just happen to you? What's, what's the process? Well, Were you born into well, it? Well, here's, here's the thing. The, right. the, the kingdom has been passed down through writers, uh, literary uh, folk, if you will. Sure. Um, the very first king was the father of quite a famous um, 
science fiction writer. Right. And he he create he passed it on to a, a famous poet, and who passed it on to another poet, who passed it on to uh, um, a writer, um, who had the unfortunate um, happening to, to uh -huh. die before he actually contacted the the next king. Uh -huh. okay. And that next king, I didn't realize, was me. But we only found out that I was the king when, when they um, f found it in his will. Wow. Okay, that was a bit of a surprise. All right, so that's Shock. your... Yes, absolutely. <laughs> what, can you remember the exact words you said when you found, when you found that out? Well, here's the thing. I I actually had interviewed King Bob, um, who who was my my predecessor. Yeah. And truthfully, I I wasn't even sure I believed he was a king. You know. Well, and, what, what, why um, did you think that? Was he was he hmm, was he too good to be true? Was he not acting in a kingly manner? Why would you say that? Oh, no, King Bob always acted in a kingly manner. Uh -huh. um, but no, seriously. Um, I wasn't even sure about the the, the, the story. The, it, it's a bit of myth. It's a bit of legend. It's seafaring talk. Um, so I, I, I wasn't a hundred percent certain I believed him, right. but I did. <laughs> Um, and um, subsequently, as I say, I, I, I've King learned Michael the Great. a lot more. All right, uh, Millie, everybody's smiling as, as we're listening to this conversation. <laughs> What's going on online? Well, I, on the show today, we have a variety of uh, political systems, if you will. Yeah. And so we asked our community if they could start their own nation. Uh -huh. What kind of government would they envision for themselves? We got sure. a variety of answers, of course. So Guido online says, considering how such power has corrupted so many great people, I think I'd pass on the opportunity to to begin with, but Carolyn, we also got this video comment from someone with a different view. Have a listen. Hello, AJ Stream. This is uh, Soumya Chatterjee from uh, India, and uh, I would like to have a five years uh, dictatorship in my micronation under a technocrat, and then democracy, because I think democracy from the very beginning, without a plan, without a goal, leads people to chaos. So, Carolyn, he's not such a fan of democracy. Now, you're a queen, but you were also yes. elected. Can you explain how that happens? Constitutionally, in Ladonia, um, we have a provision for if the current ruler somehow greatly offends the government uh, or the people, um, and maybe greatly offends is too strong, but what happened was there was a queen, um, and she disappeared, uh, stopped returning phone calls, no longer wanted to uh, to play, as it were. Um, so the cabinet exercised their constitutional right to vote her out off the throne. Uh, so they removed her from the throne and her line of successors, and that caused vacancy. And the constitution also provides that when there is a vacancy, there is an election for a new queen. So there were nominations taken from the cabinet. I was nominated. There was another uh, cabinet minister who was also nominated. Uh -huh. I believe someone nominated Angelina Jolie. Um, what? She's, a, what there was, she's in your cabinet? <laughs> no, she's not. She oh, okay. was just nominated. Oh, you beat um, out tough competition. <laughs> I did. Yeah. So there was, um, we were asked to present why we think we would be a good queen. Uh -huh. um, and then there was an election and I won. What did you say? And why did you say you would be a good queen? I looked at the qualifications, so part of my duties are being the public face of Ladonia, uh, interfacing with other governments, if possible, other nations, um, you know, public relations. So my qualifications were that I am well-traveled, I continue to travel, uh -huh. uh, I can fund most of my own travels, um, and I have done TV in the past, I've done radio in the past, I'm so a Queen very Carolyn, good writer. I mean, Ladonia is Stunning. I'm just going to show everybody what Ladonia looks like. Um, and this, I, I love the story of how you became queen because the other queen went missing in action. But this <laughs> is Ladonia here. It is uh, beautiful. Uh, um, nobody actually lives here and it started in a very bizarre way. It's all about something to do with this, this sculpture right here. What's the short yeah. version of that story? Um, short version is an artist started building it in 1980 it took the Swedish government I think three years to figure out that or find out that he was building it they filed a lawsuit to force him to tear it down they he fought the lawsuit for like 15 years yeah um, and at the conclusion of it he won the civil 
the civil suit, but there was a criminal version. Or no, I'm sorry, he won the criminal version. He was acquitted right. of that. He lost the civil version, but Sweden was unable to enforce their edict that everything be torn down. So by virtue of the fact that they were unable to enforce the laws on their own land, he said, you know what, obviously you don't control this land. It's not your land then. Right. It's my land. I declare it independent. All right. And so basically, he's an artist. He he put, yeah. built a couple of big sculptures up there, um, mm -hmm. in violation <laughs> of it being a natural reserve. But he was very clever and got around it, and so declared it yeah. Andonia. And now yes. we have how many subjects? Um, over seventeen thousand registered citizens. Wow. All right. So. Every micronation has a very different story. I'm going to go to the headlines here. Virginia man plants flag, claims African country, calling it Kingdom of North Sudan. Let me just scroll down here a little bit. And here we have, is this Princess Emily, King it, Jeremiah? It is, yes. All right. She's got everything to do with why you're now King of North Sudan. That is correct. As a parent, sometimes children lead you, lead you down a path that you never expect to travel. All right. Um, so she said, Daddy, what? Well, we were playing over the winter in her room, and uh -huh. she asked me, uh, we were lot-hearted play and uh, and she asked me in a very serious tone if she would be a princess one day uh -huh. and uh, not wanting to stifle her desire to dream I, I told her that she would be uh -huh. and after the request I began the research to see if it was even possible in our modern age to find land that belonged to no one to establish <coughs> a country sure and I was able to do that <laughs> <laughs> okay so your land is where it is in northeastern Africa along the Egyptian Sudanese border all right, I, I instantly, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers are going, okay, between Egypt and the northern part of Sudan, geopolitically, this is a tough area for you to set up a, a kingdom, right? It, it is, uh, but the reality is, is that in my travels in Egypt, despite uh, the negative press uh, that Egypt has experienced uh, yeah. in, in recent times, uh, every person that I encountered, be it... Uh, a government official or military or average citizen yeah. welcomed me with open arms and I can honestly say that my experience in traveling through Egypt was extremely positive and at no point did I feel uh, uneasy in my travels. Did they tell you, did you tell people why you were going through Egypt? Yeah, I had to request permis special permission to travel uh -huh. beyond the, the traditional tourist areas yeah. to go to the Birch Wheel area, wow. and I was granted that permission by the tourism police. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, really good. Well, the questions are rolling in here yeah. online. We want to keep them coming, hashtag AJStream. So this one is for Prince Michael of Sealand. This is a question from Gopi on Twitter who says, doesn't Sealand's turbulent history stand as a warning to nation builders? Are micronations made only for fantasy and self-aggrandizement? Uh, Prince Michael, what do you say to criticism like that? And can you explain what he means by that turbulent history? Well, I, I think um, um, to, to create a country properly, you have to have territory, don't you? And um, you have to have territory that's not already claimed. And in the case of Sealand, um, it, the, the fortress island was built by the British government, but they abandoned the sovereignty back in the 1940s. Uh, early 50s so um, you know it, it, it may it, obviously governments don't don't like what you're doing I mean the British government wasn't very happy they thought it'd be the Cuba off the east coast of England we had uh, problems with them um, we've had problems over the years with other different people who thought they would just take us over by force because that is the only way you can create a proper country is either to find terra, nu terra nullis, which has never been claimed, yeah. or, um, or take it over by force. And know, terra nullis means, act. terra nullis for, for us newbies means land that belongs to nobody? Yeah, it's never been yeah. claimed. Yeah, right. it's, yeah. It's, it's part of just gentium, which the, was yeah. the Roman law, international law that governed the world and still does, right. uh, international law. Prince Michael, while you're talking, do you mind if I play your national anthem? Please do. All right, well, how did you choose this? Uh, well, we didn't choose it. A guy um, approached us and, and uh, said he'd written it, and, uh, and there it was. Okay. When do you use this? On what occasions? Uh, we use it uh, during any state occasions or before international football matches. We have a football team that travels the world. All right, so I'm going <laughs> to let that fade out there a little bit. You can find it under the Principality of Sealand National Anthem on YouTube. Malika. Well, King Jeremiah, another question for you sure. online. Stephen wants to know, what's the obsession with monarchy, kings and queens? It suggests a quest for power that's no different to larger nations. So when your daughter asked about being a princess, did it ever cross your mind to say, well, no? 
Well, uh, you know, it was a, it was an intellectual question that I, I sought an answer to. Uh, you know, if she'd asked to be a doctor or a lawyer, uh, as a parent, I would not have told her no. Uh, and at, at, at the age of six, you know, a child's uh, frame of reference for the world uh, is influenced by media. And of course, you know, being a princess is something that our modern society uh, holds in regard and something that a, a small child looks up to. And so when she asked for that, uh, I was you know, as a result of the research, I was very surprised to learn that there was still such a large piece of land that was classified as terra nullius uh, in, in along the Egyptian-Sudanese border. And uh, in the terms of, uh, of national anthems, uh, the Kingdom of North Sudan yeah. uh, has a national anthem, and ours is U2, U2's uh, The Street Where the Streets Have No Names. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Interesting. I have to admit, I'm, yeah. I'm quite jealous of all of, your, uh, all of your wonderful national anthems because our national anthem is the sound of a stone being thrown into the water. <laughs> it's a very short national anthem. It's very short. <laughs> Our, our fantasy is at some point we would like to send Olympic athletes, um, real athletes, to the real Olympics. And uh, I'd love to see them on the podium and have them play our national anthem. <laughs> it would be the shortest award ceremony in the history of the universe. All right. So Queen Ladonia, um, uh, Queen Caroline, uh, what time is it in Ladonia right now? It has its own time zone, right? <coughs> um, it is three minutes behind Sweden. Okay. So I'm not sure exactly what time it is there right, right. now because I'm in Los Angeles. And also... Um, oh no! The lights went out. Okay, yeah. sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh my sensor. goodness. Someone in Sweden is not very happy with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. there, uh, there are two words in the language of Ladonia. So I think you should actually help us here at Al Jazeera to learn those two words. What are they? So the first word is wall. Wow. And it's spelled with one W and more A's than L's. Generally a ratio of like six A's to three L's. Okay. In that ballpark, so you pronounce it wall. Wall. And then the okay. other one is is yip. Wow. Or yip. Okay. Which is a Y umlaut with a P, but we use that more for solemn occasions. Um, we often end proclamations or uh, l l new laws that we've agreed upon with you know yip yip, and it's very serious. So we have a we have a fun word and we have a, a, a more serious word and we tend to use them in parts of speech much like one would use the word Smurf. So if you remember how the Smurfs talked and uh -huh. inter substituted that word for things, you can do that with wall. Okay. Well, we were talking about anthems. Uh, uh, the other thing that makes up a state, our community is saying, is the money that changes hands, the economics behind yes. it. So uh, King Michael, we got this tweet from Shoka on Twitter, micronations are simply tolerated, but then they're ignored. So what exactly do they bring to the table economically? What is the money situation uh, for you? Does any money change hands? Uh, is there any money involved? Absolutely not. Not, uh, not. Nothing at all. Um, Redonda is totally currency free. You can go without paying tax to get there. You don't get tax to leave. It's um, just one of those type of places. <laughs> right, but I do see that there is some money involved in Sealand. So Prince Michael, I mean, this is a, a going concern for you. It, it's not a mm -hmm. fictional place. It's a real place. People have passports, etc. Um, how much of a, an economic situation do you have setting up for Sealand? Well, it's a hugely economic situation because obviously any island is expensive to, to run, keep, to supply with food, power, fuel, um, even water. You know, everything costs money. The infrastructure costs money. Sure. So over the years we've done different things. We've um, had a, a secure data haven, online data haven. Um, we are supported by our many, many tens of thousands of, of supporters around the world. Um, uh, buying things from our online shop, uh, we we give noble titles in return for financial support, uh, and it, it all helps keep us going. Because How much does it cost years, to run Sealand? Can you reveal that to us? No, not really. I mean, it's huge amount. I mean, we have spent millions on it over the years. And yeah. Originally, we had to fund it ourselves out of our own businesses, um, but now it's fairly reasonably self-funding. Sure. Um, but it's extremely expensive um, hobby, if you like. You know, it's really hard to tell us. We're, we're talking to all these royal members of micronations around the world. Who is role playing and who is very serious? Um, King Michael the Great, are you role playing? How do you explain Redonda and your relationship with it? Well, Redonda is myth and it's fantasy, but it's real. Um, and rather like the other nations, it was unclaimed uh, by anybody at all when the first king claimed it. So, 
although it subsequently got claimed by the British government, and I do mean subsequently, and then when the British Empire ceased to be an empire and started carving up the Caribbean, um, it was passed to Antigua Barbuda, um, it, it, it still remains a, 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 um, an island where it is, right. but it's very definitely part of the government of, uh, of, the, uh, of the territory governed by Antigua mm. Barbuda. Sure. King Jeremiah, we have this video comment here. It's directed to you, and I'd like you to have a listen to it. It's someone who's questioning uh, your plans sure. uh, for, for the territory. So here it is. How do you plan on fulfilling your ambitions for the country, given that it's got no permanent population, no infrastructure, and no natural resources to speak of? Well, that is a wonderful question, and I'm, I'm glad that I was asked it because, you know, clearly taking a piece of barren desert and, and developing a, a plan uh, to make it a sustainable nation is a very difficult challenge. But the reality is, is that underneath the country we have the aquifer that is fed by Lake Nasir, so we have access to fresh water. And my daughter uh, has a desire to turn the country into an agricultural production center. She has a school teacher who travels to Africa, and so even at the age of six, she's aware of the hunger issues that face uh, the continent of Africa. And so what we intend to do is to, to reach out to the global community to basically crowdsource or crowdfund our efforts to, to bring agricultural technology to convert our barren desert into agricultural production field. We also intend to run our country off of 100% solar and wind power. Uh, and and why this is going to cost a fortune. How, how are we going to afford that? Well, based on the response that I've had uh, you know, over the last 30 days to this, I feel confident that we will have the support from the global community because I think that fighting global hunger and advancing uh, agricultural technology something beyond genetically modified foods sure. uh, and be able to terraform the land so that this technology can be shared. You know, even though here in America we're in the, the green belt area, uh, we are faced with droughts on a persistent so basis. This is deadly serious. The kingdom of North Sudan. A absolutely. Totally serious. And, and as far as our, our as far as our currency goes, um, at a point in time when we have some of those infrastructure components in place, we intend to issue uh, a digital currency right. that will be uh, on par with some better features than what Bitcoin currently offers. Right. Uh, typically, um, the the way the current digital. So can you, Jeremiah, take a breath for a moment? Sure. Because there's a lot to talk about. Because you have a whole new nation that you're Absolutely. founding right now. And we will take all of our kings, our princes, our royal family from the micronations to the post show at stream.adazero.com. But right now, here's a look at some of the other stories that we're following on the stream. What do Palestinians in Gaza and protesters in Ferguson, Missouri have in common? Well, as tweets from Palestine attest a lot. Online, many express solidarity with those in Ferguson who are protesting the police killing of an unarmed black teenager. Some are tweeting advice on how to handle tear gas in the face, while others suggest actually staying close to the police. Well, further south in the world, residents of one neighborhood in Brazil are fighting to stay in their homes. Using Resist Isidoro, many online expressed anger over a government plan that they say will evict around 8,000 families. They allege the government wants to repossess the land for an urban project. Have a listen to this. This is viver bem. This is the vida. It's na hora da gente acordar e tomar a luta. A luta para a gente como se fosse nossa. Protesters and residents have been guarding the area, saying they expect the police to take over soon. In other news, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani has generated buzz by posting this image. It's Maryam Mirzakhana, the first woman to win the prestigious Mathematics Fields Medal. Twitter users were amused by his congratulatory tweet, which showed her hair covered and uncovered. Let us know what you think of those stories. Hashtag AJStream. Femi? Thanks very much, Malika. So, what will we be doing on the next show? Well, in Canada, a community contaminated by toxic mercury. Why is one First Nation tribe still asking the government to clean up a chemical spill that happened more than 50 years ago? We'll discover that story and explore it on the next AJ Stream. Until then, we'll see you online at the post show, stream.outazero.com. Thanks for watching.
Hello again, this is the Streams Online Post Show. We're carrying on our conversation with the Royal Heads of State from four micronations around the world. So we have King Jeremiah Heaton of the Kingdom of North Sudan, King Michael Howarth of the Kingdom of Redonda, Queen Caroline Shelby of the Royal Republic of Ladonia, and Prince Michael Bates of the Principality of Sealand. So I'm just wondering, um, you weren't all born into this, what do you do to actually keep your lifestyle going do you have a day job something else that you have to do being modern monarchy so uh king jeremiah what do you actually do for a living i, I own a mine safety company okay. uh, i'm an inventor and i have created several uh, mine safety components that help save miners lives in an emergency sure queen carolyn I, um, I do search engine optimization i work for a broadcasting uh well a publishing company now sure um and i you know, I normally travel for my job. I speak at conferences internationally, and I try to work in some royal state visits uh, when I'm also traveling for work. So it makes it makes life fun. What do your workmates make of the fact that you're Queen Caroline of Ladonia? Most of them think it's wonderful. Um, many people in the office, actually, I, I have two offices, one in Chicago and one in, uh, I work out of Los Angeles sometimes. Um, but there's a number of people that have Ladonian flags. Uh, yeah. Many people have pins. Many of them have become citizens. Uh, one uh, lady at, that I work with asked to be, um, to be made a peer. So for Christmas, I'm, I made her a life peer. She's a baroness. Um, many of my colleagues in the uh, search industry are also uh, became citizens or interested in becoming okay. citizens. So they're, 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 they're it's all, a good time. Yeah, they're into that. On my laptop, you'll see how you can become a Ladonian citizen. And there's an application yes. here at ladonia.org. Let me just check in with uh, King Michael the Grey. Uh, what do you do for your day job, King Michael? Well, it's a, a prerequisite that you have to be a writer to right. be the King of Redonda. Okay. So right. no, no prizes for knowing that <laughs> I, I, write, I write books and magazines. And Prince Michael, what do you do for your day job? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm fairly retired these days, but uh, we have commercial fishing boats, uh, several commercial fishing boats, and I'm involved in the, in the shell fish industry. Sure. Milika. Well, Michael, there's a question here I'm going to direct to you. This is King Michael the Grey. Um, Taz Online wants to know, what new ways of developing and maintaining diplomatic relations do you intend to use? And so as I ask you that question, I'm thinking in mind a story you told our producers earlier um, about some members, some regulars at a pub who really like you for a certain reason. Can you tell us that reason? Well, it, it was it was um, King Bob, my predecessor, who who um, allowed that a particular pub in the south of England to become a consulate. Now, the reason that pub wanted to become a consulate was um, they wanted to get around the English laws that uh, prohibited smoking in public places, and by being a consulate, they felt they'd um, be foreign territory and the police would be able to touch them. But I have to tell you that uh, the British Bobby uh, was a bit wise to them and they, they, they stopped that. But it doesn't stop the pub from carrying on calling itself um, the consulate for to Redonda. And uh, when I became the king, they invited me over and um, I went in and I had a pint of beer, which I thought was jolly good. And they surprised me by saying, I have free beer in perpetuity. Now, how about that? Excellent. Very nice. So, any uh, Queen Caroline, any perks that you have that go with your job? I mean, do you do you actually get paid? Um, I don't get paid. Right. Um, we ha are in the process of becoming a five hundred one c six, I think it is, entity so in the United States. Wow, an official charity. Um, so that we can s sell things online. I have flags and um, flag pins. I don't know if you can see it. Um, we have souvenirs and whatnot that we would love to sell, but if I were to process credit cards through my own personal bank accounts, I would have to pay taxes on them. So in order to raise funds to fund the travel and fund um, awards, would love to give, um, we, we've got two medals that we've created that we've not yet awarded to anyone. Oh. I'd love to have orders of chivalry, but in order to fund the parties that go along with those and the creation of the medals, you do need a little bit of, you know, the money. Right. So that's our plan for uh, generating some funds. We do not currently ask people to pay taxes. Um, so the other option then is fundraising and the selling of, of merchandise. But as far as the perks go, um, I have a crown and I have a tiara and I get to wear them in public. Um, and it's a uh, 
it, it's wonderful uh, when I go places and people recognize me or they so are you uh, they're so aware people, of the situation. People really do recognize you. Swear to God. Uh, where? Where would the Queen Carolyn of, of uh, Ladonia, where would you ever get recognized other than in Ladonia? Um, in Lod well, in <laughs> Chicago, um, and, and, right. I've been to, and I've been to conferences. I've been to conferences, and people have come conferences up to me. Conferences for <gasps> micronations. No, no, my work. I was going to say real conferences. <laughs> real con <laughs> work conferences. All right, um, I, I believe actually you. Had someone, no, I had someone stand up um, at the end of one of my talks. Yes. And they, they, we do Q and A, yeah. and he stood. He stood up. He said, "Your Majesty," and then he proceeded with his <laughs> question. Yeah. I and think that might have been your <laughs> your stalker. <laughs> We'll move no. on. <laughs> That's lovely. Um, Malika. Well, we're hearing these stories, our community is, and so they're weighing in. Uh, Balogun on Twitter says, This topic has put a smile on my face. I can only wish to have my own micronation. The average Nigerian deserves one. But, of course, it is all not, it's not all sunshine and goodness. So, Prince Michael, there's a tweet here I'll direct to you. What was the last war your country fought? Now, I know you had a hostage situation. You were invaded by the Germans. You want to explain? Yeah, we were invaded by the Germans in 1978, or a group of Germans, a mixture of Germans, Dutch and uh, um, Austrians, I think. Um, you say it so nonchalantly. Yeah. You were invaded. So what, what, does, that, what does that entail? Uh, I was, I was uh, on the, the Fortress Island on my own, uh, and this uh, KLM helicopter came out, a Dutch helicopter came out with uh, several people on who, they couldn't land the helicopter, they winched down onto the helipad on the top and cut a long story short i ended up locked up in a room for three or four days did you have food and water what was the hospital no 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 no, no no food and water and i ended up fighting with them and got tied up and how old was were you sweating how, how old, old were you I? yeah yeah 27. okay all 27. right wow. and and i got taken to holland and and uh, put ashore in holland and a couple of days later we went back out there in a helicopter with the doors taken off slid down ropes onto the top of the thing and and uh, recaptured it so interesting times. Wow, we have a swashbuckling hero here in our midst. I am um, King Jeremiah. I'm just thinking about where the Kingdom of North Sudan is. It's in a very delicate part of the world. Egypt is on one neighbour, Sudan is the other neighbour. Geopolitically, how are your neighbours reacting to you and your idea? Have you even spoken to them? Well, if you look at Egypt, you'll see that Egypt is a peacemaker. They're a peace-loving people. Uh, they're negotiating between uh, Gaza and Israel right now, uh, trying to, to end the war. We have been following the news for the last two years, obviously. Uh, so that's a, that's a uh, big uh, statement uh, to make. Uh, and not everybody uh, in Egypt would necessarily uh, agree right. with that. You know, just, just like in America, America, you right. know, you have the situation in Ferguson where we as Americans have our blemishes. You know, the, sure. the apple is not always shiny. All right. And, uh, you know, clearly every country has that happened. And, you know, I think that when you have uh, freedom that is oppressed, you're going to have those type of instances where the people uh, take to the streets. And, the go and any government across the world is going to so respond. So General Sisi, for instance, are you ever going to meet with him, talk to I, him? I, I, do, I do hope that I right. can have a discussion with the Egyptian government. Like I said before, I feel confident. Line up. <laughs> Join the line. Right. I, feel, I feel confident once things settle down and I have an opportunity to, to right. and and I, and I want to do it at a, at, a, at, a, at the same time. Speak with the Sudanese and the Egyptians so that right. that not preference is seen as being given to one or the other. My country is 800 square miles, so it's significantly larger than than the other micro nations, and so we have a lot of room to develop. Uh, and I think that the things that we can offer our neighbors are, are significant. In terms, are you not of afraid that at some point someone is just going to call you on? this it doesn't belong to you it's a border dispute between Egypt and Sudan and they're just going to kick you off no and, and really if you look at the scholars that have weighed in on this uh, it has a very clear history of being terra nullius and uh, right. you know for over 100 years uh, you know the, the the area has been uh, basically vacant and uh, wow. you know it's very surprising that it, it's remained in that status for that long but uh, you know I went there and planted a flag right. and uh, in the process of doing that you know, uh, you know. Some people have said that just simply planting a flag is not a valid way to do things. But sure. you know, the Russians have done it uh, by placing a flag on the seafloor, claiming their area. Well, it there. used to be done like that. Well, with an, right. an it, army it, or a navy. If, 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 Je I, if, 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 I, if I have done oh, it, 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 if oh. I have done it wrong, it's yeah. been done, done wrong for a millennia. <laughs> All right. Yes, uh, sir. Jeremiah, my, uh, this is uh, Michael Legray. Listen, do, do, are there anywhere else in the world that, uh, that, that uh, when you were looking for your country, did you find anywhere else that is unclaimed? And, and 
Are you going to tell us where it is? <laughs> <laughs> well, An Antarctica was the first stop on the journey, but due to the international treaty that prevents any further... Antarctica's pretty claimed. Have you seen what, how many other people uh, well, are laying claim to that? Yeah, and, and that's, that's what I've said, is, is that the international treaty precludes that. But just as we've discussed already, the reality is is that uh, you know the land there at Burt Will has been terra nullius for a very long time. So I think that the history of the region is on my side, right. and the international law that has been established is so, on my so, side. So, so if, um, as, as uh, Michael Gray was saying, there's nowhere else in the world, just just that little sliver there. I, I, I want to say that there's an area near Bosnia Herzegovina, oh. somewhere somewhere in in Eastern How big Europe. Is it? Uh, you know, I, I, just ask again. Uh, <laughs> it's very small. Yeah, very so. small. Interesting. I think good good luck with the southern east thing. I think you might find that quite hard work. I mean, uh, you know, that's a leery part of the world, isn't it, Africa? That's where the adventure is. Interesting. Well, well you know, the, the, the great thing about it is is that we have a lot of land uh, that is available to us to develop. And I think that if you look at the path that we're on, yeah. that we really want to be very good neighbors in the region and to provide uh, to those people in Africa who are doing without yeah. food right now. Food security on the continent of Africa is a very big issue. So Over the last that? 20 years, I can, pe people I can who have... Your, I can see your sincerity. I can sure. feel your sincerity here. And, and that's people one get upset though. Right. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a tweet here. Um, a dude shows up in Africa, declares himself ruler of a piece of land so daughter can be a princess. This is, what's, this is what colonialism has become. How, how do you even answer well, that kind of question? And, and I appreciate that question and, yeah. and I appreciate that type of feedback. But yeah. if you look at the definition of colonialism, yeah. colonialism is one nation, an established nation, going to another nation and subjugating its people and territories for exploitation of resources. Right. I do not represent the United States government. The area of Bertawil is very clearly defined as being terra nullius. It has zero population and to be very frank despite having yeah. answered this question a lot yeah I, I don't know exactly what the term is for what I've done because yeah. it's not been done in the modern age but right. it, you know in looking at the parameters for what the definition for colonialism is uh, it's not that right. and it, you know I have you know where, where I'm a white American and I've gone to the continent of Africa you know uh, that has caused some negativity but the reality is is that my daughter has a desire to want to help to feed the people who are hungry on this earth and that's what I'm going to do as a parent and king to facilitate that because I think that we have the opportunity here with the attention that the Kingdom of North Sudan has enjoyed on a global basis to really make an impact for helping to feed the people of the world and that's what we intend to do. Oh my goodness! I think you're going to get subjects just from that little speech alone. Um, uh, the, the world, how are you going to do that? The, the world is short on love. Yeah. And while there's a lot of novelty and a lot of fun that can be had by, by in, in the micro nation, there's also a lot of good deeds and good works that can be done. Yeah. I think I would like to think that in our modern age, that people don't see race, creed, or color anymore, and that they want to work towards solving the issues of the world. And and that's me, and that is my family, and that there's no greater legacy than I can leave my kids uh, from this project than a sense of service to the world. And uh, you know, uh, I think that that's the greatest gift that you can give anyone is to be able to be able to help people. King Jeremiah, you're going to be doing banging speeches, that's for sure. Okay, uh, Malika Bala. <laughs> well, I will, I will end it with this tweet from Community. Uh, this mm. is from Abdullah, who uh, gives you a little bit of pushback, uh, King Jeremiah. Sure. He says, I claimed it as a state of beer to will online before him, which, of course, Femi, goes into something mm. we didn't even talk about in today's show, online micronations. And if you want to learn more about that, this conversation, will continue online. You can tweet back and forth, and someone will explain it. I am claiming this desk, okay? <laughs> I'm succeeding yeah. from Al Jazeera, and this desk is going to be Streamville. You can be Queen of the East. Thank you. I'll be Queen of the West, and you can be. What shall we make you? You can be President. Is that all right? <laughs> can you take on two jobs? As long at the same as time? as long as it's a, it's a position that affords me to help people, then yes. I will take it. And my subjects are in the control room. <laughs> Fade to black. <laughs> we will be back on Monday if my subjects haven't overthrown me. <laughs> on Monday, we have a whole different kind of show. In Canada, a community contaminated by toxic mercury. Why is one First Nation tribe still asking the government to clean up a chemical spill that happened more than 50 years ago? I have to say thank you very much to Queen Carolyn, King Jeremiah, King Michael Gray, Prince Michael Sealand. It's been a pleasure learning about your micro nations. Thank you very much. Take care.